Euripides Medea, a plot summary. There is no chorus entry ode, which is very unusual. It begins outside Jason's house in Corinth. There is a scared nurse talking about the context. So Jason and his Argonauts went to get the Golden Fleece in Colchis. Medea fell in love with Jason and they travelled to Iolcus. She got Peleus' daughters to kill him and then travelled to Corinth in exile. Now Jason has cheated on Medea and married Glauca, Creon's daughter and princess of Corinth. The nurse says that Medea is furious, not eating, crying, regretting leaving her father and hates her sons. The nurse is frightened that Medea is forming a plan. The children, two boys, arrive with their tutor. The tutor and the nurse discuss Medea's pain. The tutor says that she's not heard the worst yet, that she and the boys are to be banished from Corinth. The tutor says that Jason wouldn't stop it because he now loves Glauca and is part of that house. They decide not to tell Medea straight away, and they criticise Jason. Medea's moans are heard from inside the house. The nurse tells the children to go, but but to avoid Medea. The tutor follows them. Medea addresses the children and calls them cursed, still from indoors. The nurse is upset and asks what the children have done and why Medea hates them. She says that the mind of a queen is a thing to fear. A chorus of Corinthian women enters. This highlights Medea's status as a foreigner and emphasises her isolation. They say that they empathise and sympathise with her. Their loyalty lies with Jason's house. The nurse says that Jason's house no longer exists. Medea, from indoors, says that she wants to die. The chorus say that Medea shouldn't think that. It isn't odd for a man to have an affair in those times. Medea talks about the promises he had made and her loss of her father and brother. Medea prays for Jason and his bride to die. The chorus say, tell her we are all on her side. The nurse talks about how music seems to be only for joy, but not for sorrow, and then enters the house. Medea enters. She clearly had been crying, but is now calm. She dresses the chorus, talks of the woman's role, says she wants to die again. We have bought a husband. We must accept him as possessor of our body. This is odd, because she isn't Greek. Therefore, she had no arranged marriage, and therefore no dowry. Women can't divorce. She's a foreigner with magic. There is the double standard of men having affairs, but women can't. She says, I'd rather stand three times in the front line than bear one child. She is alone and wants revenge. The chorus agree that Jason deserves punishment. The king of Corinth, Creon, approaches. He says that he is exiling Medea and her sons. She asks why. Creon fears that Medea may harm his daughter. He has heard rumours of her threats. He says that Medea is missing the sex, which is referenced frequently. Creon is a family man. Glauca is is his priority over everything. Medea says that her reputation has been her ruin. She thinks she is disliked because she is clever. She says that she has no issue with Creon. Glauca should be married to Jason. All Medea wants to do is remain in Corinth peacefully. Creon says he fears her more because she is so quiet and clever. Therefore she must leave. She appeals to him through Glauca. Creon swears he will never change his mind. Medea asks for one day to make plans and provision. She says that she needs to care for her sons, and Creon should understand as a father. Creon realises his soft heart makes him foolish, but says she can have one day, but she will die if she is still in Corinth after that. Creon leaves, and then Medea says that she will have revenge on the couple and those nearest to them, i.e. Creon. Today three of my enemies I shall strike dead, father and daughter and my husband. She debates the best way to kill, and decides poison, because then she won't be caught in the act. She decides to wait a bit to see if she can find a way out. If she can, then she will kill quietly, but if not, she'll just do it anyway. She doesn't want to be laughed at. She says to the chorus, We were born women, useless for honest purposes, but in all kinds of evil, skilled practitioners. The chorus talk about the female versus male. Deceit is men's device now. Male poets with stories about evil women will go out of fashion, and in real life, men are as infamous as women. They talk about Medea coming from her father's house and now being exiled. She can't return to her father, and her husband is with another woman. Jason enters. This is the first time that we have seen him. Euripides has already built a prejudice against him. He says that Medea's rage is silly. She could have stayed in Corinth, but instead was angry and is now banished. He has tried to calm Creon and Glauca down, but Medea has made it impossible. 
He will give Medea and the boys some money and provision if they exile. Medea calls him unmanly and her worst enemy. She says that she was the reason he became a hero and got the Golden Fleece. For example, she saved him from the fire-breathing bulls and she killed the serpent guarding the fleece. She deceived her father for him and she killed Peleus in Iolcus. If she hadn't given him children, then she would have understood. He had made her promises and now is breaking his oaths. She blames him for the loss of relationship with her father and the fact that she has nowhere to go. Medea and their sons begging will make him look bad. Jason disputes her arguments. He says he succeeded because of Aphrodite and nobody else. In return for Medea's help, she left a barbarous place to live as a Greek, which was considered very civilised. He's marrying into the royal family for Medea and the boys. He isn't doing it for love, hatred of Medea or more sons. He wanted to ensure that they live wealthily and then provide the boys with brothers that were royal. He says that Medea has sex jealousy and that if women didn't exist, life would be perpetually happy. The chorus say that Jason is in the wrong. Medea says that if Jason was doing it for her, then he should have told her first. He says he did not tell her because of her temper. He reaffirms his reasoning for remarrying. He says it's her fault that she's exiled for cursing the royal house. Medea says she's working on behalf of fate. Jason says he will provide anything she wants for the children or herself, but she has got to calm down. She refuses, and he leaves. She swears to ruin his marriage. The chorus sing about Aphrodite and her powers in love. They pray to never leave old love for new, because it brings on trouble and fights. They talk about exile. That is the most pitiful of all griefs. Death is better. They have seen the troubles of exile. They talk to Medea and how she has no friends to take pity on her. They call for dishonour on bad friends. Aegeus enters. Aegeus and Medea greet like old friends. He says he has come from Delphi because he was praying for children. He is married but has no kids. Phoebus, the prophet, told him not to unstop the wineskin's neck until he came safely home. Aegeus has come to Corinth to ask the king of Trozen's advice about the oracle. He asks Medea why she looks so bad, and she says that her husband is evil. She tells him what happened. Aegeus says that it is shameful. Medea then tells him who he has remarried, and that she is banished. She grabs Aegeus's knees in supplication and asks to be received in Athens. She says that she knows certain drugs and will ensure the conception of children. Aegeus agrees that when she is in Athens, he will protect her, but he will not help her to leave Corinth. This is odd, because if she is exiled, then she has to leave. Therefore, he clearly guesses that she is going to do something criminal and will be tried. people will try to arrest her. She makes him swear an oath never to expel her from Athens or never to give her up to her enemies. He leaves. The nurse returns and listens in silence. Medea is very happy because now she can have revenge and get to safety in Athens. She plans to speak to Jason and tell him that he is right and then beg him to let the boys stay. She will send the boys to the palace with the poison dress and crown for Glauca and then she will kill her sons to ruin Jason's line. She will fly away. I can endure guilt, however horrible. The laughter of my enemies I will not endure. The chorus tell her not to do it. It is against the law. Killing her own children will be heartbreaking and can she actually bring herself to do it? Medea says it will be the worst for Jason and sends the nurse to fetch him. She trusts her because she is a woman. The chorus talk about the prosperity of Athens. Athens is a great city that even the gods enjoy. How will Athens welcome you, the child killer, whose presence is pollution? Their fourth argument to convince Medea not to kill is, will she still be accepted in Athens after they realise what she has done? They beg her not to kill her children. They appeal to her motherhood, When your sons kneel to you for pity, will you stain your fingers with their blood? Your heart will melt. You know you cannot. Jason enters, and two maids come out of the house to attend Medea. Medea asks Jason to forgive her. She talks about their memories of love. She dresses each of the rational reasons that Jason had given. She's mad to fight the king when Jason is trying his best. Glauca's royal sons will be Medea's son's brothers. They were exiles and have few friends, so an alliance is useful. Women are what we are. Not very good. She calls for the children to come out with their tutor. And she tells them to hug Jason and forget the fighting. She suddenly cries 
and she says it is because she knows what the pain in the future hides from us. Medea says she realises the ridiculousness of the fighting. The chorus say that they are almost in tears, and now the madness shall end. Jason says that he doesn't blame her original anger. Only natural, only naturally, a woman is angry when her husband marries a second wife. Now she is being sensible. He says that he has ensured a good life for the boys, and they will grow up big and strong and lead Corinth. Medea cries again, and he asks why. She says she understands why she is exiled, but she wants the boys to stay in Corinth. Jason says he doesn't know if he could persuade the king or Glauca. Medea says that she will send the boys with presents for Glauca to win over. A slave brings a casket, which Medea hands to the boys. Jason asks why. Do you think that a royal palace is in want of dresses? Medea says she wants to buy her sons from exile, and Glauca must receive the gifts into her own hands. Jason, the children, and the tutor all leave to the palace. The chorus sing about the children walking to murder. They discuss Glauca taking the presents with joy and then dying. They pity Jason. Although they condemn him, they still think that Medea has been wronged. The tutor and children return. The tutor is very happy and says that the boys aren't banished anymore. The princess loved her gifts. Medea is silent. The tutor is confused as to why she's not happy. She mutters to herself about the cruelty of life. He asks why she's crying, and she says that it is because of her own evil. She tells the tutor to go and prepare for the boys. They come to her, and she talks to them about her misery, and they are now motherless. She rants on and then cries. They move a bit away from her. She has an internal struggle of whether to kill the boys. She can't do it. She'll take them in exile. Why should she hurt them when she will suffer twice as much as Jason? Her enemies will laugh at her. She is a coward to even think about not going through with it. The children go to the door and watch her. She continues with her internal debate, and then realises that Glauca is probably already dying, so as she started on this path, she may as well finish it. She says goodbye to the boys, holding their hands, then sends them indoors because my pain is more than I can bear. She realises how horrific her plan is, but knows that her anger will carry her through it. She goes to stand, looking towards the palace. There is a choral interlude, which is not a formal choral ode. The chorus responds to the immediate threat by discussing the pros and cons. Women can get into fights. Women can be intelligent. People without children are lucky. Childless people have no means of knowing whether children are a blessing or a burden. Those with children are constantly anxious. This elongates the time in which the audience don't know what's happened at the palace and adds tension. A messenger arrives telling Medea to escape because the poison has killed both the princess and Creon. Medea is very happy and asks for details. The messenger doesn't understand why she's so happy. He tells her what happened. The boys entered the palace and the servants were happy because they'd felt sorry for Medea and her sons. Glauca was originally upset that they'd come into her room, but then Jason soothed her got them to give her the gifts and asked her to get Creon to revoke the exile. She was won over by the gifts. Glauca put on the dress and crown, looking in the mirror. She walked around the room happily. She changed colour, stumbled and collapsed into a chair. An old woman chanted the cry of worship. Glauca frothed at the mouth, her eyes rolled into her head and she went pale. The woman changed to a despairing howl. One maid went to find the king and the other to find Jason. The crown came on fire and the dress ate her flesh. She slept, she leapt up trying to shake off the crown and then fell to the ground. Only her father could recognise her because of the disfigurement. Her flesh melted. Creon came into the room and threw himself to her side, kissing and hugging her. He cried to die with her, then tried to get up, but his skin was stuck to her dress and he died. The messenger tells Medea to run away and then leaves. Medea says her next move is to kill the children. She talks herself into it. She's very stubborn. Medea enters the house. The chorus call on the sun to watch Medea kill her children. They query why Medea needs to do this. A child's scream is heard from within the house. This is the first time we've heard the kids actually make noise. The chorus finally withdraw all of their support from Medea. The children's voices scream out, saying that their mother is killing them. The chorus debate whether to enter. They compare Medea to Eno, who killed her children, then killed herself in the sea in misery, partly due to Hera. Jason enters running. He asks the woman if Medea is in the house. He wants to save the children from the Corinthians because he thinks that they will want revenge on Medea. 
The chorus say that he has yet to learn how great his trouble is. He asks if Medea is trying to kill him too. He doesn't understand her capabilities. The chorus tell him that she has actually killed the children. He is very upset. They tell him to open the door and see. He orders the slaves to. He batters at the doors, but Medea appears on the roof in a chariot, drawn by dragons, with the bodies of the children beside her. She says that he can't get to her because she is in the chariot, sent by the sun. He shouts at her and insults her, curses her, ref to her reference to her being a barbarian. He says that she murdered her brother at the hearth and says she'd done it again because of sex. She likens, he likens her to a tiger and skiller. He tells her to go so that he can mourn. She says, you were mistaken if you thought you could dishonour my bed and live a pleasant life and laugh at me. He says that she suffers the loss too, but she says it's worth it for his sadness. They fight a bit more, each blaming one another for the deaths. He asks for his sons so that he can bury them, but she says no. She will take them to the temple of Hera at Crea and bury them herself. She will let there be an annual feast of sacrifice in Corinth. She will go to Athens to live with Aegeus. She prophesies that Jason will die an unheroic death with his head crushed by a timber from the Argo. And he curses her. She tells him to go and bury his wife. She says that he only loves his kids now that they're gone, but he was willing to send them into exile before. The chariot flies away as Jason talks about his grief. And the chorus end with a comment about how the gods are surprising. <laughs>